Um, this is the uh, kind of the forgotten aspect of rope rescue. The, uh, the flat, well you can say flat isn't rope rescue at all. Low angle rope rescue. Uh, it's kind of an oxymoron because why would you need a rope for low angle? But you'd be amazed that we kind of collectively will go overkill when we train for a low angle rope rescue. And I have a theory on this and I think it's because we train so much for the high angle environment and we're using like harnesses, helmets, two rope system, like a main and a belay and then two points of contact for a rescuer and the whole nine yards and the bells and whistles. And when we shift into like a low angle training mode, we just carry those habits with us without even thinking about what we're really doing. We have to define our parameters on angles and steepness and what that means for us. So I brought my uh, inclinometer here and we're on like some representative slope that's close by about 26 degrees so a 26 degree slope and let's see there's no absolute like definitive parameters for how we define like high angle versus steep angle versus low angle but there are a couple of books out there that kind of seem to gravitate towards a common uh, range so flat about 0 to 15 degrees okay that makes sense low angle somewhere in the 15 to 40 degree range and then beyond that, there's like a gray area. 40 to 60 is your steep angle, and then 60 and higher, that's high angle. Seems to make sense, and it has implications on, on what you're protecting, what the hazard, risk, consequence kind of matrix is gonna look like for you. We have to consider exposure hazards. So we're operating on a low angle. What's the hazard? Is there a significant drop somewhere nearby where we could lose control completely to our rescuers and or our subject or patient? Also, what's the condition of the slope? For example, like a 10 degree slope on super thin glass ice, like you don't have any grip balance, like things will slide uh, versus things that have steps and ridges, like rocky terrain. You probably need at least four people to do this. This is low angle. Do we need a rope or not? Well, uh, we have to assess what the consequence is. If we lose control of this litter and it falls, where's it gonna go? Chances are it's not gonna go anywhere. And so we could reasonably assume that we don't need a rope. Plus, what are the chances that our rescuers are gonna lose grip and lose control? Slim to none. Um, it's kind of funny to kind of talk about this when in EMS, we use stair chairs to transport patients like, through like a, a third story apartment or we use a, a patient tarp going down a staircase and that's like steep angle but we don't protect anything the idea of ropes is not even in our mind um so it's just one of those things it's like what's the risk benefit here do we need a rope do we need a rescuer and a helmet and then a harness and does this rescuer need to be hooked in on his harness to the litter itself i would argue that this whole thing is way overkill and it's actually not a good idea at all in my opinion because let's think about it if the people operating ropes are thinking that they're going to haul just because it's a rope and they're like oh they're coming up a slope i need to make a haul system and they decide that they're going to yard on these ropes and pull this thing forward the rescuers are having to resist that forward pull at the same time balance the force of gravity in their legs that's that's what low angle is most of the force is transmitted to the rescuer's feet that's why we need more rescuers to hold the litter the force of gravity in the direction comes into play when we get steeper and it's easier for rescuers to lean back when that happens if we try and lean back on the rescuers to oppose a force of a pulling on a low angle we're still supporting ourselves on the ground and it throws our balance off and we could fall we're just making life a lot harder than it needs to be we don't need to do any of this or all of this so let's back it up completely. Um, so Gabe, rather than hooking into the litter, just get out completely. Because if you lose control, I'd rather have you just lose control and you're, you're not affecting the, the forces on the litter. Because if you're attached and you fall, that changes the forces that we have to absorb and then we can kind of get thrown off. So we don't want our rescuers attached into the litter at all. Um, this could get tiring. We can simply girth hitch webbing and then wrap it around our shoulder grab the litter with one hand and then grab the webbing where we want to balance it out and so now the forces are distributed across my body as we all travel let's just start walking straight up the slope makes it very easy to carry with minimal risk or hazard 
Um, and if we want to stop, we can say stop, set the litter down. Okay, set it down on flat ground. And we are not connected on our, in our harness to the litter and it's not doing anything weird to our bodies. Uh, I want to match up height. Uh, so Gabe and I are roughly the same height. And then we have the same height rescuers on opposite sides. If we want to get tired and switch two rope system, overly redundant. Uh, again, uh, the idea of a two rope system is a backup. So if one system were to fail, the other would catch it. Our primary support for all this are our rescuers standing on their feet, walking this thing up a slope. So we don't even need one of these. We can get rid of all together. Do we even need a rope as a backup? Again, it goes back to, well, what if we, what if the ground here was slick and icy? And if this fell and we lost control, would it slide and, and would it go? Uh, and then if it does go, is it going off of a ledge? So those are all things to take in consideration. When in doubt, yeah, put a backup line on it. How you rig a back line, backup line in this environment, it doesn't really matter what you do. I could easily just take a clovefish and hitch it into the rail. It, none of this is really that critical. Um, so one thing to note is whoever's operating this backup line, just don't pull on it. Don't treat it as a haul system. We just want to capture the progress so that if we lose control or stop or set it down, it's just kept taut and nothing's going anywhere. Holding a litter, walking it down a slope. So if you notice, like our rescuers don't have to face the anchor. They aren't going to walk backwards. <laughs> they're, they're just going to grab the litter, like I lift, and we're going a down slope away from the anchor. Why would he need to be clipped in to something in this orientation when the anchor's back back up that way? So get out of get out of that completely because that's just it's just going to hang you up. You don't need it. We face away from the anchor on our low angle, low slash moderate, uh, going down slope. Again, we aren't doing, we aren't walking back like this, uh, fighting a system. All the while, if we need a backup line, they're just easing it out. The, the temptation for rescuers to clip into the litter with a harness on a low angle and then lean back into it, thinking that this is the way to do it. Uh, let's talk about all the problems that, that exist with it. We already mentioned the fact that they're capable of supporting their own weight on the ground. So they're, they're fighting two different forces, one supporting their own weight and then the force of some sort of haul system that this is going to have to be a haul system now because they're fighting it. They're, they're trying to lean back when they shouldn't. And so now the operators up here, this isn't a backup. They're actually having to put mechanical advantage on this and really yard on this pretty hard. Um, if you look at where Gabe's connected too, like, the, the, yeah, I, I, anywhere here, again, it's bad. You'd want to be pelvic to something, but I would say that a litter is, is a bad idea because um, if we if we look at like our high angle and our redundancy, usually like our litter tenders, we want them connected into a rope system and not the litter itself. You can imagine that right here, if this is like a bridle and I hook a rope system on like a bowline knot right here, um, this carabiner and this bridle uh, bears the, the force of the load. And if they're hooked into the litter, they're also part of that, as opposed to them maybe putting an Aztec or a set of fours into the yoke of the rope system and letting th these components only bear the weight of one person. Artificial high directionals, vortex frames, uh, we use those in steep and high angle environments to get the rope off the ground to reduce uh, edge trauma on the rope, but really to reduce friction on a haul. If we're coming up, that adds a whole lot of friction and, and tensile force in our system that we have to overcome. We've put uh, an excess amount of force in a, in a rope haul system on a low angle that we didn't have to do in the first place. We're increasing our uh, the force that our anchor operator has to overcome on a haul. So now we have to rig mechanical advantage and maybe get more people. And we're overcomplicating a simple low angle rope system. It's really just a backup line and the rescuer should be firmly planted on the ground. Uh oh, someone's hurt your leg. Yeah, so how easy is it for you and natural is it for you to walk up like this, not being pulled, trying to lean back yeah, on something that you can walk up yourself. Yeah. 
Right, and you can imagine if there was a heavier weight in here. All right, let's see how that works out. How does that feel on your belt? It hurts. It real hurts bad. his belt really bad because it's my weight is pushing his whole body into the ground on his belt. It's completely unnatural. How does that feel on you? Terrible. It's pulling your harness down into the ground. They have to support their own weight and my weight and they have to fight and they have to lean back in an unnatural position fighting a haul team that's fighting them. And we're having to overcome friction on the ground because we don't have a high directional. Okay, and this is when people get off balance uh, if the terrain's a little bit more gnarly and they get dragged in the ground because now they can't get back up. In summary, um, low versus steep angle other than like a delineator between, I don't know, 15 to 40 degrees and then 40 to 60 on steep. In a practical sense, consequences of a fall. So if our rescuers are in a place on a slope where if they fall, will they continue to fall? Will gravity take hold and continue to, to rake them through the terrain? If it's yes, then you could argue that that's steep angle and you should probably rig ropes and have your rescuers into the rope system with more traditional things that we do. Two rope systems with a main and a blade, two tension rope system, uh, you know, sternal, on a full body harness as a backup and then a primary connection. Um, if the consequences of the fall are your rescuers will fall, they may stumble a little bit down a slope, but it, they can self arrest or they just fall around and pick themselves back up. They don't need to be in a rope system. They don't need to be tied into a litter. Um, so that's kind of the, that's, that's one big kind of check for, okay, should we be, are we in low or steep angle? What effect does does leaning back if you're in a rope system have on your balance and stability? Um, low angle, leaning back in a low angle rope system is detrimental to the operation in my opinion. Whereas in a steep angle, you need to lean back because gravity is, is providing that ideal position for you uh, as a rescuer, tending a litter, and it's easier to just kick out and vector that litter off the face of the wall, which is our goal anyway. When our angle gets shallower and more low, what's vectoring the litter off of the face of the wall? There's no wall, it's just a slope. And what's keeping it off that slope is the rescuers themselves carrying it. Uh, so leaning back and putting a rope system on a low angle, all that would do if this is our slope and this is the rope and they're they're going out this way um, and you're gonna create a haul system on a low angle Well, you're gonna pull a rescuer up a slope that way they're trying to hold the litter off the ground the rope is not doing anything to keep the litter off the ground and hold it like it does nothing um, and they're tied in on their harness so the rope is pulling the litter which is pulling the rescuer on the harness in one direction and they're trying to walk themselves up. So you have a force on the rescuers in one direction, the force of gravity going down, and they're trying to balance these two forces. Uh, and then if they just want to say, okay, I'm really going to lean back into this, they're going to resist the rope pull by leaning back. Uh, they're, they're, <laughs> their bodies are being stretched and they're still having to to walk and support the weight of themselves and the litter. So this completely throws the balance off and I'd say that putting a rope system and having all that redundancy that we do with a high angle operation is more detrimental for low angle. Uh, no need to overcomplicate something that is inherently simple. We're, we're overcomplicating it. Uh, plus, you can imagine that if we had six uh, rescuers tending a litter on a low angle and they wanted to haul actually pull this whole thing up with a patient that's seven people right here six of them are resisting and trying to basically make this into a high line and their legs are basically the far side anchor uh, they're putting a lot of force on the top side anchor um, you could 
easily get to a thousand pounds or more. Um, and a lot of times when we do low angle rigging, we're thinking, oh, it's low angle, it's not, the forces aren't that great, but we can easily make the forces pretty high and blow up anchors as well. So that's another problem with trying to like do like an actual rope rescue system in a low angle environment. Um, so if you're gonna do a rope rescue system, um, just use a rope, a single rope, through some sort of way to capture progress, not to haul, so no mechanical advantage, you don't need a haul team. You can maybe give a directional assist pull uh, to help assist, but there's a balance point there. You have to be careful. Um, if we're pulling on this rope, uh, we have the potential to outpace our rescuers walking, and that can throw them off. If people can like just walk down a slope facing away from the top side, then it's, it's, not, a, it's not a steep angle. Um, so they're walking, and they're walking downhill facing downhill. Um, if they need to transport a, a patient walking downhill, they're going to face downhill. Rope system has no, there's no place for the rescuers to be connected anywhere because they're perfectly comfortable. It's, there's, the consequence is, is really minimal. So uh, low consequence if they're actually walking down a slope with a patient. Do they need helmets? Uh, well, sure, why not? Uh, they could fall, they could bash their head if they fall on the rocks or wherever, so sure, helmet, great. Uh, if not, not a big deal. You just assess the conditions. Harness, low angle, most likely not. Um, unless there's some sort of consequence, but I, it's hard to, to try to think of what kind of consequence would dictate that if there's some exposure factor. Usually we're, we're well away from like steeper terrain unless it's uh, like the, the beginning stages of a low angle that starts right at the a breakover point. Maybe you could initially start that way. Once you get enough distance away from steeper terrain, you can probably like start removing all that stuff. So, uh, but classic pure low angle, I'd say no harness. Two rope system low angle, definitely not. Um, you don't need that redundancy. One rope system, perhaps. If you do, it's just a backup system. It's not like a haul system. Um, Connections into the litter, not really. Uh, for the patient, okay, you can secure them into the litter, but you don't need elaborate internal and external lashing to keep them from going all sorts of directions out the litter. It's not a high angle. So uh, rest your connections into the litter on a low angle, absolutely not in my opinion. Um, connections into a, a rope system master attachment point uh, for the rescuers, um, I'd say absolutely not, but not for low angle. Um, if we go steep angle, uh, connections into the map for the rescuer, yes. Uh, for the litter in a steep angle for the rescuers, no. I wouldn't want to be connected to the litter ever for any rescuer, low, steep, or high angle. Uh, if you're going to connect, connect into the master point. The use of artificial high directionals. If you're, if you're turning it into a haul system, then you would want to use a high directional to at least eliminate that increased friction. Uh, and difficulty that the operators at the anchor have to overcome. Um, so, uh, what's worse? Uh, yeah, no, no high directional with a haul system in a low angle is terrible. Uh, you can correct it by putting a high directional, but the solution really is is dumb it down and just don't put a haul system in. Just capture progress and let the rescuers bring the package up. Okay, that sums it up. So that's a quick summary. Uh, some of that information, uh, that critical thinking, uh, could be debatable. So it's, this is highly opinionated. Um, but go train, practice, see for yourself the effects of what you do uh, trying to overcomplicate your rope systems.